So COVID is a weapon? Okay, really quick, this video is a bit long and technical, but don't click off. It's also very fascinating and a tad bit terrifying. What's up guys, Max here. I'm a Navy veteran and host the Scuttlebutt Show, all about military and veteran topics. Check out our podcast in the links down below, and also check out how you can support the channel at scuttlebuttshow.com. This is a little different for me, but the implications here are so crazy and somewhat military related, so I figured I'd go ahead and break down these bombshell allegations from my perspective. Monday, September 14th, Dr. Li Mingyan published her 26-page article, Unusual Features of the SARS-CoV-2 Genome Suggesting Sophisticated Laboratory Modification Rather Than Natural Evolution and Delineation of Its Probable Synthetic Route. So first off, safe to say scientists need to hire somebody to do their titling. For a layperson like myself, this could be called the Was COVID Made in a Lab article. Before we get into the contents of the article, let's start with some relevant disclosures. First off, I do not align with a political party. I believe COVID is a real thing, not a hoax. I wear a mask in public and I am not a conspiracy theorist and I'm not going to be pushing any conspiracy theories here. I'm just going to be relaying the info in this article as I understand it. Next, this article's publication has the Rule of Law Society associated in its title. This organization is headed up by Steve Bannon, among others. Its stated mission is to expose corruption and other human rights violations committed by the Chinese government and allow the people of China to live under a system based on law independent of the People's Republic of China. The author, Li Mingyan, is from Hong Kong and fled to the U.S. in April after alleged efforts by China to undermine her studies and alleged threats on her life. For the purposes of this video, I will be referring to SARS-CoV-2 as COVID for simplicity's sake, okay? So this paper was published on Zenodo, a scientific research site owned by CERN, the particle collider folks out in the EU. After it was published, the site was hacked multiple times and had periods of downtime throughout the week. The link to the complete article is in the description and includes all the references and info that I talk about here in this video, and hopefully it's still up at the time you watch this. Dr. Yan states that in her article that the findings on COVID published already that claim COVID occurred naturally, including one by Nature Medicine, a big publication, have been subjected to censorship and pressure from government agencies, as well as major conflicts of interest. She claims that the theory that fabricated scientific data has been published to mislead the world's efforts in tracing the origin of COVID has become substantially convincing and is interlocked with the notion that COVID is of a non-natural origin. She backs up this claim with the evidence she has discovered while doing her own laboratory research on the virus. Research has long advanced to the stage where viral genomes can be precisely engineered and manipulated to enable the creation of novel coronaviruses possessing unique properties, she says. So one of the major reasons she has come to believe the coronavirus may be man-made is that COVID is suspiciously similar to another bat virus that the Chinese uh, military laboratories have discovered. But this particular strain is enhanced with a unique furring cleavage uh, site in its spike protein, which she claims is completely absent in this class of viruses as they're found in nature. This makes it more effective in transmission and ability to infect humans. Now, look, I'm not even going to pretend to be a scientist, an MD, or even an above average knowledgeable person on this subject matter. So I'll try and explain some of these terms based on my own research. So furin, I hope I'm saying it right, allows certain proteins to become active in humans. In COVID, this is particularly effective. And Dr. Yan believes this should not have occurred naturally. She has laid out the genome of COVID in her article and identifies that the genomes of individual components of the virus are suspiciously similar to known viruses, including the E protein, which is 100% identical to known viruses ZC45 and ZXC21, which she believes are the base viruses used to create COVID. Additionally, the ORF8 protein is 94.2% similar, which is significant because no known other coronaviruses are more than 58% similar. Notably, the ZC45 and ZXC21 bat coronaviruses were discovered in the last several years and isolated by military researchers in China. She goes on to address the ways she believes COVID could have naturally occurred, including an ancient combination of known diseases in, in a host, and then what's called a convergent evolution occurs where two different organisms evolve similarly into the novel coronavirus we have now, or a natural recombination event when two molecules exchange DNA that would have, and then that would have occurred recently. The problem with the first version is that it would lead to large mutations from the original form where COVID is remarkably similar to already known viruses. In the second scenario, the perfect combination of viruses would have to be present in the perfect host at the perfect time. 
Then the viruses would have to thrive within the host and then stabilize in the current form that we know COVID now. And all of that would have to occur at a rapid pace. She claims that this could not have occurred in bats as well, though this is a bat coronavirus. Also of note, there were no other viruses discovered prior to COVID that could have been the ones that converged to create COVID. Lastly, some have suggested that this virus could have been carried through China by pangolins, which is another word for anteaters, which are known to carry coronaviruses. And one was even recently discovered that was very similar to COVID. But th then there were some flaws found in that research, some significant ones that she references in the article. Another study she references exempts all animals from a role as carriers of COVID to humans and remains suspicious that COVID has been so effective at spreading to humans since the beginning. She goes on to reference research from the Wuhan Institute of Virology, the WIV, which shows they've successfully generated human bonding coronaviruses of non-human origin repeatedly. Within the article, Dr. Yan goes on to provide genetic anomalies that should not occur naturally. She describes those as the smoking gun that COVID is the product of genetic manipulation. This would make sense, she says, and align with the fact that COVID is highly transmissible, onset hidden, lethal, seculae unclear, and massively disruptive, all of which are unusual for a new virus. She concludes her summary by saying that the evidence that this virus was created in a Chinese lab is significant and should be investigated. There is a part two of this article, which I'll describe as the how I would have done it section, and you can go ahead and read that. It's fairly compelling. One thing I will mention about that is she describes how it likely would have been used in lab rats over and over and over again until it evolved into the version of the virus that would be most effective at infecting humans. I'd like to note, too, that the language used in this article is designed in a very thoughtful way. She says the virus should not occur, that this should be investigated. This is a very scientific way to think. It leaves open the possibility that she is wrong, but that this series of events should be investigated. It's intriguing enough. This article is also written without a motive in mind, but it is hard to imagine the motive for weaponizing and releasing a virus that would indiscriminately kill millions of people around the world. It's also possible, and some believe, that this virus was meant to be much, much worse. But when it began spreading through humans, it failed to attack the way it had been designed to, which makes sense. I'm sure there's many unpredictable factors here. Okay, before we get to the end here, I want to thank you guys for watching so far. If you like this content, do me a favor and subscribe down below and check out the links in the description where you can get some great Scuttlebutt merch and support the channel for as little as 99 cents a month through our Anchor podcast page. Okay, back to the video. In her final thoughts, she states, one, if it was a laboratory product, the most critical element in its creation, the backbone template virus ZC45 and ZXC21, is owned by military research laboratories. Two, the genome sequence of SARS-CoV-2 has likely undergone genetic engineering, through which the virus has gained the ability to target humans with enhanced virulence and infectivity. Three, the characteristics and pathogenic effects of SARS-CoV-2 are unprecedented. The virus is highly transmissible, onset hidden, multi-organ targeting, seculae unclear, lethal, and associated with various symptoms and complications. And four, SARS-CoV-2 caused a worldwide pandemic, taking hundreds of thousands of lives and shutting down the global economy. It has a destructive power like no other. I would like to give some of my thoughts on this whole subject now. Let's start. For one, there are many, many scientists and studies that have been conducted that resulted in the belief that this virus did occur naturally. That's important to remember. There certainly could be motivation to publish this study to cause panic and confusion in an effort to undermine China's efforts in Hong Kong. Just speculating here. I encourage you to read the article and check the references and draw your own conclusions. It's, it's in the link down below. Let's assume her scientific results are accurate for a moment. An equally acceptable explanation to me is that there's just simply so much we don't understand about viruses and when lacking a better explanation, she determined that it must have been man-made. Now, let's say it was man-made. The virus could have been leaked accidentally or by a lone wolf type actor, not necessarily state-sponsored. But lastly, what if it was the government of China who was responsible? What should happen? What sort of accountability should there be? I am not even going to go down that road because my personal belief here is that only pure research and complete transparency should be used to figure out how and why COVID happened and how we can prevent it from happening in the future. If this experience has taught us anything, it's that our world is not prepared for a pandemic event, and we should definitely take steps to make sure we are ready for one, which will inevitably happen in the future. Okay, I hope you're all staying safe out there, and I hope we get through this very soon. I look forward to talking to you guys really soon on this channel, and I'm out for now. What's up, guys? Thanks for watching that video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, 
go ahead and hit that subscribe button up in the corner here and check out this next video. If you want, in the description down below, there's links where you can get Scuttlebutt Show merch and find out how you can support the channel. I really appreciate it, and I look forward to talking to you guys very soon.